So is Saints and Seducers worth its $15 price tag? Bethesda has just added their biggest DLC update to the Creation Club to date. Come, come it's the Saints and Seducers quest mod and before I play through this mod with you guys, I just want to give you a spoiler free review. So what does this Elder Scrolls V Skyrim mod add to the game? Firstly we have 4 new armour sets and weapon sets, in fact there are 38 weapons in total that this Creation Club mod adds to the game. Two of which are unique weapons with unique textures that I'll be showing you how to get in the walkthrough later. The first armour and weapon set though is the Dark Seducers set. Both the male and the female variant have been added and all of the dark weaponry including battle axe, bow, daggers, greatsword, maces, swords, axes, warhammers and arrows. And the same again for the Golden Saints armour set and may I say that the 3D models and textures for all of these weapons and armours in the DLC are insanely good and I'm just really impressed, there's nothing but quality here. Then we have the amber armor and weapons and again all of the weapons are here, all of the armor set is here and it's been reimagined in Skyrim but it's still very much faithful to the original set that many of you will remember from the Oblivion DLC, the Shivering Isles. I just think they've done a fantastic job on it. And then finally we have the armor and weapons of madness, including a uniquely enchanted helm with plus 100% magicka regeneration. And all of these sets can be crafted at a blacksmith by the way, after you've learned the recipe and you can enchant them yourself. We also have a unique two-handed Jigalag sword and shattered warhammer among a bunch of other things like new enemies, locations, easter eggs, quests, lore, which is all unfortunately because Bethesda don't want to invest any money in voice acting for Creation Club content. And this mod also includes all the new alchemy ingredients from Rare Curios which have been added for free within this mod. And bear in mind, we're getting into Dragonborn territory here. The Dragonborn DLC was only worth $20. It added as many NPCs, as many weapons, as many unique weapons as well. And it also added lots of voiced quest lines, a whole new island area, locations, player homes to explore. It added so much content for only $20, so when you look at this and you say, that's $15, it's not worth it, is it? Um, but people are still going to buy it, and here we are. <laughs> now I'm going to buy it and play through it for you guys and completely review it. So as with everything in the Creation Club, we open up our journal and we find a new entry, the Balance of Power quest. I've heard a rumour that a Khajiit caravan merchant has been running into trouble with bandits along the road and is in need of assistance. I should speak to him if we ever cross paths. If we ever cross paths, let's immediately head over to him right now. He's just outside of White Run. It's my boy. Well, hello there, my moon sugary friend. Do the longer we travel the roads of Skyrim, the more empty this land seems. I've heard you've been running into trouble along the road. It is all in this note. Oh, oh great. <laughs> Having the whole storyline literally told to me through notes does get a little bit tiresome sometimes. I mean, I'm right here. The guy could have spoken to me. Come on. Literally giving me a note because there's no dialogue. The roads have been unkind to this one, plagued by outlaws along the route from White Run to Markath. Guards travel with Rissad, but they are ill-equipped to deal with ones such as this. They wield strange golden weapons and wear gleaming armour. Rissad has heard of such things only in stories. Their encampment is found just west, north of Brittleshin Pass. Each time they set upon us, they shout, The Saints would like to browse your wares today. <laughs> that is so Sheogorath, isn't it? The brutes steal mostly trinkets and oddities, no matter how cheap this one knows them to be. Then they allow Rissad to go on his way. Rissad has not fought back yet. While it has harmed this one's coin purse, it is not worth a life. Rasad has heard of another gang patrolling the roads further north, calling themselves the Seducers. They are known for their menacingly dark armour. 
Skyrim grows more perilous by the day. They are known to camp along the road west of Fort Castal. This one would pay handsomely to anyone who would help, or sad fears any who might come to harm at the hands of these warrior pests. Look how happy he is. My god, the face of joy. So now we know the location of both of their bandit camps, because that's apparently what they are, bandits. One of them is apparently just over here, the Saints Bandit Camp. Okay, we're here at Brittle Shin Pass, and I can actually see a dragon over there in the distance. Ah, these must be the Saints Encampment. Let's see if we can take them out. Oh, we'll leave the cook, and we'll take out this one first. Yeet! Get Rexard. Come at me, bro. Aha! I am way too powerful for you. Ah, finish him! Ah. So this is the first bandit, and we can see this uh, creation club also adds in new alchemy ingredients. He's also got the saint's boots, gloves, a backpack, and just some fur. He's got a golden saint sword as well. Okay, let's pick up this for sure. There's also a Manic Nymph in here, which I assume we could unlock. Maybe the bandit has a key to this chest. He's got a note on the blacksmith. Our blacksmith, Jolfden, has gone mad. Most of the time he spouts nonsense. This all started three days ago. Now he won't even pick up his hammer. We've tried to talk sense into the lout, but it's like he doesn't even see us. He wrote down the means to forge our golden arms and armour, and that of the seducers, but he never told a soul where he left the blasted notes. If we weren't holding out hope that he might snap out of it, we would have already parted his head from the rest of him. <laughs> Lately, he's been going on about playing under the bridge like he was still a child. That's where I always hid my toys, he said. I know his kin used to live around Half Moon Mill. We should round up some folk and have a look. Okay, so we know where we can potentially get the recipe for crafting the Golden Saints armor. Oh, he's also got a book on saints and seducers and a journal of the bandit leader. The shield, boots, gauntlets, and a war axe. Okay, let's read his journal then. Now this is what I call easy coin. I'm proud to be one of the saints. Every few days, Rasad comes down the road and his wares are ours for the taking. We don't take everything, mind you. If he don't got nothing to sell, we can't stay in business. And then where would we be? We just skin a bit off the top each time. Kinfau should be happy with our latest take. He'll be leaving this camp up near Karth Waston to pay a visit soon. Those damn seducers were eating into our profits and so we drove them off up north. Other merchants pass through those parts so maybe they'll stay gone. And then we have the Saints and Seducers Journal, which gives us the backstory on them as well. Okay, so before we head over to the Seducers Bandit Camp, we need to come here to Half Moon Mill, where apparently under the bridge, the blacksmith has left the notes on how to craft the unique Seducers armor, so we can make our own set of it. Okay, so here we are at the Half Moon Mill, and I guess under this bridge just here, we're going to find some notes somewhere. Well, I don't know where. Aha, there's a chest here. Jofton's notes. Ebony ingots, gold, quicksilver ingots, and a scroll of firestorm. Let's read his notes then. You can now create new equipment. Okay, so we've just learned how to make the seducer's armor from his notes. An ancient battle site was discovered near Thorin's lair. On the ground, an assortment of weapons and armor from the Daedra known as the Golden Saints and Dark Seducers laid strewn about. It is from this site that we took up their arms and joined together as bandit companions under their names. <laughs> Since then, as only blacksmith, I have kept it upon myself to study these, these otherworldly artifacts, and now, at last, my efforts to reproduce the exquisite craftsmanship of the Great Daedra has finally borne fruit. My mind, though, is not what it once was. If my memory fails me, at least those notes can help others keep the craft alive. One would be foolish to forge weapons from gold, as it is far too soft, and yet the golden blades of the saints are nimble and harder than steel. How could this be? The trick appears to be threefold. 
First, the structure of the piece must be reinforced with reinforced moonstone. Secondly, the gold must be hammered into place with gold, heated just below its melting point. Third, the introduction of the heart of a daedra to forge when heating the piece so it can be hammered into shape completely transforms the attributes of the metal, giving it an uncanny hardness. The process for forging the dark armour of the seducers is similar, but requires more finesse as you must balance shaping the unyielding ebony with the malleable quicksilver. The heat applied must be very precise or the shape and its integrity of the equipment will be ruined. As before, introduce the Daedric heart to the forge as you heat the material. So that is a little lesson on how you craft the Saint's armor and what I absolutely love about this quest. I mean, so far, is that it's just, it doesn't, it only tells you in the journal, if you read it, that the uh, notes on crafting the secret armor are, are hidden under the bridge at Half Moon Mill. Okay, so now we've got to fast travel to the other Saints Bandit camp just over here. And then I guess we can find some more Saints armor. I assume they're at the top of this cliff here. Aha, we found their camp. Here they are. Let's take out this boy first. He seems to be the leader. Get wrecked, sir. What was that arrow? Did you? Oh, he's still alive. He survived. Behind you. Get wrecked. They have no idea where we are, Lydia. Not even this sneaky Khajiit here. Oh, oh, he spotted us, Lydia. Watch out. Aha. You are no match for me, Kajiti. Right, let's go and loot these bodies and see what we can find. So we have another journal here. Another unique ingredient. Scroll of Conjure Golden Saint Warrior. Well, that's new. Let's take both of those. Some Void Essence, which I'm going to eat. And some more Golden Saint's Armor. And the Golden Saint's Warhammer, which is an eagle with a beak in it. Let's read his journal quickly. Even though we no longer raid with the backstabbing seducers, we still work for that wizard, Thorin. He's been paying us handsomely to turn over Rissad's caravan, looking for any trinkets that seem strange. A week ago, we found a sword unlike anything we've ever seen. Thorin's face lit up when he saw it. This could be it, he said. Something about a bridge. He's probably lost it. No sword is worth how much he paid us for it. Won't hear us complaining, though. We see Thorin once a month or so, so he can look at our spoils. Everything he doesn't want, we split and sell. Nice and clean. When, when we're done, he skulks off back to that lair of his in solitude. What he does there is anyone's guess. Okay, so we've got a little bit more information about who's buying the probably unique or rare goods from these bandits. But let's quickly loot them for the rest of their armor. There also seems to be some more scrolls of summoned saint warriors and a golden sword here at the altar they were standing at. I wonder if they've got any more wares in their chest. Nope, just standard ingredients by the looks of it. Oh my goodness, it's a rare black fox. Yeet! Oh no, Lydia! No, it's getting away, Lydia! Mr. Fox, please. Oh my goodness! <laughs> he flew into the air. So now we need to discover the seducer's camp, which is west from Windhelm, just located here. So let's fast travel to the Overlook. So we can see the seducer's camp just down the mountain here. I wonder if we can get an extremely awesome... <gasps> is that a goat? Yikes! Oh my god, it got paralysed. That's what goats actually do when they get scared. They just paralyze themselves. Oh, they're all moving now. Oh my god, they're being attacked by Frost Troll. Are you kidding me? This is too perfect. I wonder if they're going to win or not. What's that guy doing? Nice. Critical strike. Oh, wow. Did you guys see that dodge? He moved out of the way and the other bandit got hit. That is so funny. Right, let's jump down here, guys, and take them out. Come at me, bro. We are ready for you. I like how the weather just changed there. Oh, goodness. Get Rex up. 
Well, hello there. Look at that face paint she's got. Just... <sighs> Alright, let's loot these guys. That shield didn't really protect her, did it? So she's got a journal, um, but let's first loot these bodies because they're going to have the seducer's armor or at least part of it. And a dark sword as well. And I'm over encumbered, oh dear. Oh my god, you can see all the arrows that like just missed them. <laughs> oh, the dark bow. It's really just preference as to which one you like. I believe they both do the same damage anyway. Dark dagger. There's also a chest here which seduces bandit's cage key. Okay. Let's have a look in the cage. We have a full set of seducer's armor. Are you seduced? I am 100% seduced by that man, Jesus. That fuzzy boy, Lydia, hey? So this is the uh, the cage which has another nymph in. And there's also a note on this nymph, which is interesting. Let's read this. I can't believe we carried this bug the whole way here. Cage and all. Always afraid it's going to find a way out through the bars and eat me in my sleep. Okay, let's just go ahead and open the gate. Hello there. Oh, hello, a bug. Do the bandits lock you up? Aren't you an adorable little bug? You're a weird one, but still only the third strangest thing I've met this week. Do you want to come with me? All right, let's go. Like how it just makes the same sound. Oh, hello there. So cute, look at it. I need you to carry something. Oh, okay, so this pet can basically carry things back to the city or to home for you. And you can also harvest its venom, which I assume mystic venom we'll have a look at that in a second what was i say i need some help in battle he just grunts at me oh jesus did it just heal us or i think that was uh so this pet has an ability that increases your marksman and one-handed and two-handed skill for five minutes so that's pretty damn good to be honest now let's read the bandits journal the seducers bandits leader dark work this but does it ever pay well once every few days, a merchant comes galloping through, defenseless as a babe. We seducers always do our good deed and lighten their load before we let them part. It's the least we can do. Moving north was the best thing we ever did. Leave Rasad to the milk drinkers of Whiterun, or as they call themselves, the Saints. They're probably still hounding him on the road to Markath. Svarig is behind on his visit. I wonder if his path from the west was more treacherous than usual. We need a change in our fortunes. If we don't get paid soon, I fear the others might not stay much longer. Hopefully this new lead pans out. There's also a book on heretical thoughts, which I believe is about the dark seducers. Oh, she's also got a dark mace as well, which looks pretty grim. And if we shack around their camp, we're also going to find a knapsack just here that actually has a bandit's note on hidden treasure. Book of the Nightingales and just some random other stuff. So the other seducer camp is just down the hill here. So let's head over there. So I can see the bandit camp. It actually looks like there's a guy mining over here as well. He will be the first to get taken out. Get Rex on. Look at this guy. He's like, what's going on? Aha. Get Rex. Arrow to the knee, my friend. Oh, hello there. Jesus. That hurt, my friend, please. Could you stop that? Right, we've taken out all these guys then. Okay, so before we search his body, let's have a little look around here. Because there's an altar with another dark bow, some soul gems and arrows. And also a scroll of conjure dark seducer warrior. Which is going to be pretty fun. We'll try that out later. Um, let's have a look what you were holding. Just some random seducer armor and a mace. And now let's have a look at the bandit leader. So he has a journal and oh yeah, some other creepy ingredients there. Another two scrolls of summon dark seducer. He's also got a seducer greatsword, which is kind of like a really cool sword. Let's have a look at his journal though. We continue to do the bidding of Thoron, our wealthy benefactor. Though our relationship has taken a turn for the worst, he still pays exceedingly well and continues to ask us to pillage the trade caravans as they pass, searching for anything we can find that seems off or even a hint of magic. Thoron is a powerful conjurer 
but he is also completely insane. He has become increasingly unhappy with our spoils as of late. I suspect that the vainglorious saints have done something to gain his favour. We've all become fearful of what might happen if we meet him next month and he disapproves of our spoil. If you ask me, all that time he spends holed up in those sewers has finally turned his brains upside down. He seems to really like those tongs and rusty calipers we brought for him a few months back. All we need is to find the right place piece of junk that he thinks will help him bridge the gap he keeps on going on about and will have a full coin purse once again. So he already knew that he was in solitude but now we know he's in the solitude sewers because we can cross reference both of those books. And there also seems to be a old caravan chest here. Carriage deliverer's note, okay. That is actually the quest note to start the quest Legends Lost, which I already made a video on uh, because it's another Creation Club downloadable content. So now we need to investigate the Solitude sewers. So now we need to fast travel to Solitude and find Thoron, who apparently resides in the sewers here. What a fantastic villain's hideout. It's never been done before by any supervillain. Oh, okay. This is completely remade. It's like a whole new dungeon. Okay, so we can go right or left. I want to have a look to the left first. This is like a maze, isn't it? Ah, this door is barred. Okay, so we have to go this way. I'm going to get my bow out ready. In my seducer's armor so I can seduce anyone I come up against. Oh my goodness, it looks like the madness has been taken hold of the solitude sewers. It's like one of the root caves from uh, the Shivering Isles. Look at this. It's really quite beautiful. We can harvest all these ingredients as well and I guess they'll respawn in a couple of in-game weeks for the taking. Ah, my favorite creepy crawly creatures. Get wrecked, son. I hated these things in the Shivering Isles. They're so creepy. Oh God, I missed. Get it. is that? Get Rex, son. Oh my god, it went into his knee. I'm so beautiful, man. Oh, it makes me want to go back and play the Shivering Isle. Should we do a Christmas special, guys? Where we just live stream through the Shivering Isles. That could be really cool. Oh my goodness. That sprigging got wrecked. Look at that. I'll take these out as well. Oh, yes. Oh my god, they were triggered. Please look away. Look away. Get wrecked, son. Yeet. Oh! No, please. Don't look at me. Okay, so we can go right or into this cave here. Don't know where this goes. What's that? That's Spriggan. Right in the bunchy. Oh, Jesus. There's a lot of creepy crawlies here. Right in the booty. Just where she likes it. A corrupted spriggin with some gnarl bark and some spriggin sap. There's also a treasure chest here with an apprenticed lock, which obviously I is no match for me. So, aha, so much treasure that I do not need. Nice. Run back into the main root area. Continue on this path up the hill. see anything yet. Aha! I knew there was some bugs somewhere. Get Rex up. Oh, he's still alive. Okay. Oh, okay. Looks like there's a lot of uh, messy 
Wait, there's some arrows here. Golden arrows. Okay, so the saints and seducers have clearly been fighting here. There's helmets and swords and dead dark seducers everywhere. And some of the caravan parts with golden maces and whatnot. Very interesting. Aha! This must be our conjurer. Let's see if we can kill him in one hit. Oh my goodness, he is very tanky. Oh my goodness, that does nothing to him. Oh Jesus, he's gonna kill me. Okay. Okay, mate. That was rather disgusting. I'm not going to lie. Oh my god, I had to start from the beginning? Jesus. Okay, let's try this again. He's literally wearing no clothing, for this sake. Maybe they can just repeatedly sneak attack him. Oh no, now he's summoned two dark seducers. Or two saints. We also don't know where I am. Oh god, they know. He keeps summoning them though? I don't know why. Clearly he is a foolish man. Oh god, please. Back off. Back off. Oh god, he spotted me. Now we're dead. No, no, don't hit me. Jesus. Where is he? Where is he going? Where is he running off to? He's run away from me. Oh boy, where are you going, mate? Come here. Get Rex on. Nope. There's something over there. Go and have a look what that is. He's healing himself. Jesus, I need to kill this guy quickly. Luckily, my sneak is just ridiculous. How is that not hitting him? Oh my god, he's almost dead. Whoa, oh, that was close. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so close. Black Soul Gem. Gnarl Bark Gold. Heart of the Order. Oh my goodness. From Jigalag. Oh, we've also got the spell tomes of Conjure Seducer Archer, Warrior, Golden State Archer, and Warrior. And we have two journals here that we'll read in a second. But we also have the Madness Helm of Recovery. Magicka regenerates 100% faster. Yo, that is ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. Ring of Disrobing modifies the wearer's worn equipment. Why is this even in the game? I'm going to put this on immediately so I can run around like a boss. Chain Lightning Bolt it does 40 points of shock damage. Okay, let's read his journals before we continue through the rest of this cave and this dlc has a lot more to offer that i want to share with you guys as well i've stumbled upon a dream not one conjured from sleep or, or stupor but sight and sense i now hold my possessions a lump of amber shaped like the mad god himself when i placed my hand upon it for the very first time i stepped into the world of mania my mind was truly clear and my eyes forever open. But as all dreams come to pass, so too did my time in bliss. With a single step, I found myself back in the wilderness, far from my lovely mania. Gone were the golden hills, luminous stalks and whimsical fragrances, and in its place the stink of flora and falls unbothered by, by the gloom. I set about making connections with the artifact once more, and the wondrous land it has revealed to me. 4th of 1st seed, 4th era 200. Curses! After two days of constant focus, I finally connected with Mania once more. Or it may be more accurate to say that Mania connected with me. In this secluded camp near Solitude, a powerful Daedra took shape before my eye. A golden saint, with armor gleaming and eyes burning, with surprise and fury. To my dismay, my ordinary methods of bending Daedra to my will were of no use. As it began to raise its weapon against me, I fled. Whatever power was left in the amber, it lies dormant now. I must find other artifacts like it and through their magic, forge a connection to the world I lost. Let's have a look in the other journal, volume 2. 16th of Sun's Dusk, 4th Era, 200. I've taken up residence deep in solitude sewers, away from prying eyes I am sure to be undetected here while I continue my work. It pains me to work with these bandit imbeciles with their heads made of cheese, or was it brains made of yoghurt? I suppose the distinction is irrelevant, they are clumps of aged dairy, 
left out in the sun, each one far too stupid to know the worth of their plunder. And for that reason, they themselves are given worth. Much as our lord would do, I have split them into two groups to cover the caravan trade routes therein. The armors I've collected from these tunnels will serve use here. Perhaps I will make it a competition. The group that retrieves the most artifacts will be rewarded with a bar of soap. <laughs> 28th of Rain's Hand. The more artifacts I gather, the more in tune with our Lord I become. I can feel his wisdom coursing through me, informing my every move. Yet there is something lacking, as nothing I have retrieved thus far has allowed me to return to my blessed mania. Even I've even turned to using tokens from Demantia out of desperation. With every failed attempt, my patient continues to thin. I may need to strangle a bandit or two, or twenty, to calm my frazzled nerves. Our Lord Sheogorath must be pleased, very, very pleased. This new artifact is a truly remarkable find. Yes, truly, truly remarkable. To think that it was nearly dismissed as an ordinary claymore, when it was in fact the Sword of Jigalag, the weapon wielded by the Daedric Prince of Order. It's the craftsmanship that betrays the truth. Perfect symmetry on both sides, its angles matching 10 numerals beyond the decimal, perhaps 20 or even 40 numerals. I will make an effort to count them tonight. Yet its true power is held in its enchantment, for when I look upon its crystal edge I see more than my reflection. I begin to see time, the way a cloud sees the river. It has a beginning and an end, but they exist in concert. The past, present and future flow as one. I spoke to a cloud the next day and it confirmed this to be true. Through the sword's visions I know what is to come. The sewers beneath the city is where the path will open. The sword will serve as the bridge. 22nd of mid-year 4th era 201. The sword of Jigalag reveals much beyond my intent. It has a logic that seems familiar, but at the same time repels me. It desires mania as much as I do, but its goal is that of destruction. Worse yet, our lord's voice feels distant, muted even. I find my thoughts being short and my words more so. I need to keep my writing separate, I'm beginning to suspect my journals are speaking to each other. No, not suspect, I have proof, but I can't write it here, lest my future self speaks more lies. Each thought past and present must remain pure. Okay then, little bit strange. So I guess just here we have the Sword of Jigalag. I picked that up. Completing, completed restoring order. Okay, so we've restored order to the realm, I guess. And if we have a look at the Sword of Jigalag, it does 27 damage, making it one of the best great swords in the game, I believe. Um, it also has a weight of 25 and a value of 3,200. Its attack speed is pretty ridiculously fast, to be honest with you. Doesn't seem to have any special enchantments that I can see personally, though. And to be honest with you, the textures don't look that incredible. But hey, there it is, the Sword of Jigalag. So now we have a few more things, including a busk of Sheogorath, the green butterfly in a jar. You guys can see the Daedric writing underneath it. That's part of a secret quest line as well. We have some more scrolls of Summon Dark Seducer. Uh, a note on amber and madness ore, which is um, how we're going to craft that armor. And there's also some madness ore here. And there's a Sheogorath shaped amber worth 3,000 gold. No idea why it's so expensive. Let's have a look. <laughs> he actually kind of looks like him. That is so cool. He's even got his nose. Incredible. I guess he sleeps with that now and again. And there's also a journal volume 3. So we can read that right now. And then we'll go and have a search for everything else in this DLC. Fifth of Sun's Height, 4th Era 201, the sword's bloodlust can be used. Its desire to cleave a bridge, cut open the past, but never let the wounds fester. A broken bone grows stronger when healed. 18th of Sun's Height, 4th Era. Another vision, a long march through the grade, shuck crackle of boots pressed on misshapen throats. In the fog, a whistle marking time. The sword is planted in the earth. Chaos screams, bleeds. Through its heart, roots are nourished. From the wound, a tree blooms. A path opens. Thirst of last seed, fourth era. Scar tissue hardens. Roots 
thicken. The wound bleeds, but the path is blocked. A fish swimming upstream. Perhaps the path is not for me. The path is for it. The river must flow from some source to mouth. Fill the mind's cup. 16th of last seed, 4th era. Temporary hearing loss. Bread baking in a hearth. We reach out and grasp the abyss, only to let go. Face first into the mud with gritting teeth. Light bending through a glass eye. How easily we are lost. Revelation soaring on red wing above the dark. Raining running down the side of every window pane. I will not go manic. I will bring mania to me. I guess he pretty much did go manic. I mean, the guy was wearing a helmet of madness himself, which tells us everything we need to know about him. There's also a hollowed out tree trunk with some amber hidden here, which is very nice. Before I forget, we also have the note on the madness ore just here. So let's take a read of this. This sample of madness ore was discovered deep in a Nordic ruin. It, should, it shouldn't have, no, could not have been there before. My time spent with the sword has an impact far greater than I ever could have imagined. My reach has grown far beyond these twisting tunnels. This is wonderful news. Perhaps even more such fragments have appeared in the most unlikely of places. That said, working this material into a usable form has proven difficult. Raw amber equally so. This is a job better suited for a master blacksmith with deep knowledge of the arcane. Someone like Ephtharath, however. A peerless smithy and my confidant in learning the hidden side of spellcraft. Everthrath would no doubt be able to work out the secret of amber and madness ore. If she hasn't gone completely mad by now, that is. I shall have the seducers deliver her a sample of each. With any luck, she still hones her craft north of Mistwatch, even after all these years. So Mistwatch is where we can find out how to make, I guess, the other armor set. Let's take that with us on our journey. We've got the Sword of Jigalag already. There's nothing more here. We can continue on this path to the right. Um, and we have a few more things to finish off now. This continues up to the right here, and I do believe we should come through the same door that we exited from. Yes! Yes! Okay, the swing speed is actually quite slow on this weapon. I don't know how much I'd actually use it, to be honest. I guess we can come down here and chill out whenever we feel like it, though, which is nice. All right, let's head back up into solitude, back up into the world of normal people from Tamriel. So just north of Mistwatch here, we're going to find the secret smithy. So let's go to the Atronov stone. That's probably the closest place nearby this ruin. So we can see Mistwatch just up the cliff there. And in this ruin, oh my goodness, is there a dragon? Yes, there is, goodness me. In this ruin, which is literally not used for anything, we have, I guess this is the blacksmith actually. We have to kill her for some reason. She's gone a bit crazy, I assume. Get Rex, son. You are no match for me, wizard. Hey, come back here. There we go. She is down. Oh, goodness, there's some skeletons. Watch out, Lydia. Lydia, look out behind you. Hey there. Right, let's loot this uh, witch's corpse then. She has a journal that I guess is going to give us an idea. Oh, weapons and armor can be improved 20% better. That's a really good apron, my goodness. Um, okay, let's have a look at her journal then. I know of you both, Amber and Madness. I am well acquainted with your secrets. Amber the Glowing works of an alien room. I find your resin pristine and holy, light and powerful. You require a delicate hand, one that recognizes the fragile nature of beauty. Madness. I know you to be a flexible breed, one congealed from the tattered minds of dead heroes. Unlike Amber, I would bend and bow you like a sinew. I would beat and hammer you, stretch and fold you, knowing that each blow would callous your skin and sharpen your teeth. It was dark and armored men that brought me these treats, these puzzles to solve. Courtesy of Thoron, they said. Liars. There is no Thoron. Not anymore. 
Here's a memory of long past and memories are as real as dreams and other fanciful thoughts. Still, I had to have them. Amber, so exquisite, so pretty. Like drops of fallen stardew. From your honeyed globes I would craft myself an armour that trapped me inside your beauty and warmth. I would suffocate myself in your light and in death live for eternity. But madness, oh madness, you charm me with your edge. From you I would forge a knife to cut out Sheogorath's tongue and use it to lick the dust off my anvil. Oh, how happy that would make all three of us. In my desperation I've turned to magic to try and turn these earthly materials into your equals. I have forged armour and blade in hopes of finding a worthy pair, but they are failures, not fit for your shadows, so instead I will mine these forests and in the dead I will have caravans search the far corners of Tamriel. I will reach into the eye of oblivion itself until I find you both again. Okay, so she's gone a little bit crazy. Is that a bear, Lydia? I thought you killed the bear. Is it still here? Okay, so we have on this desk, Blessings of Shergorath, a Nordic Sword of Fear, Ice Sword, Glass Sword of Fear, Dwarven Sword of Cowardice, and some other, literally every type of sword is positioned around this, this altar. There's even some Elven armor here, and Elven swords and Iron Swords, Daedric Sword even, nice. And here we have some more Madness Ore and some Amber Ore just here for us to collect. And after you guys have read that journal, you can then come to the smith and we can literally just start crafting in the miscellaneous section, by the way. Adamantium. Amber. All of the amber items here that you can now craft. The dark items and the seducer sets which we found earlier in the video. And also the saint's armor. And also all of the golden weapons and the golden saint's armor as well. And you'll also finally be able to craft the madness weapons as well as the amber ones as well. And like, I mean, look at the... Oh God, it just looks so awesome, doesn't it? So now we must complete the quest Balance of Power by returning to Rissad, who's located outside of Whiterun. Hello there, my friend. Yes. I've taken care of the saints and seducers for you. Excellent. And now, please, accept this token of appreciation. 300 gold. And we've completed the quest. So there we have it, saints and seducers, and there's actually one more unique artifact we still need to find in this quest, which I'll be making a video on tomorrow. Bear with me, it's taking me probably about three hours of gameplay to put together the footage you've seen so far. Just about $5 per hour, I would say, and you know, most of it, about 70% of it, I would say, is literally me reading. So... I don't know if that's for everyone. Personally, I like reading, but is that $15 worth of content? I don't think so. Though I think the weapons and armor and how it's been reimagined into Skyrim is just incredibly good. And I absolutely love that. This is this as a weapon and armor package is everything I wanted from the Creation Club. I'm just so sorry that it's $15 as a price tag. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section though guys and give the video a, if, a like. Goodness me, I can't even speak anymore. If you did enjoy it and please consider supporting me on Patreon because that literally makes this content possible for me to make. To spend this long making uh, literally an hour long edited video uh, reviewing this kind of content and doing a walkthrough because I know there are some people struggling with how you got some of the things in this video. But I'll link the other Creation Club content I've already reviewed down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a fantastic rest of your weekend. And guys, thanks so much for the support on this series. Goodbye.